Hello class, this is Miss Augustine, and we are still talking about reaction energy. This is chapter 16, and today we're going to talk about the driving force of reactions, specifically about entropy, enthalpy, and free energy. So when we talk about driving force of reactions, we talk about what makes a reaction spontaneous. Some things occur spontaneously, and others do not. So example, balls roll down a hill spontaneously, obvious, but why? Driving force, potential energy is too high, so nature wants to lower it, hence a spontaneous. Nature has a tendency of reactions to occur that lead to a lower energy state. Therefore, the ball will not roll up a hill. In order to make the ball roll up the hill, you would have to give it energy to do so. So again, in general, the universe tends to favor things that lead to lower energy states. Which brings us to a discussion of entropy. What is entropy? The definition is a property that describes the order of a system. So entropy has to do with randomness. Nature tends toward disorder, so the universe and nature tend to prefer disorder. So uh, an increase in entropy means an increase in randomness. So hint, is it easier to mess up or to clean up a room? We measure delta S in joules per degree Kelvin mole and temperature can have an effect on entropy. So here's an example of a disordered room. It's much easier to get it in that state than it is to get it back in an ordered state. Um, an example I like to use is if I leave an uncooked steak out on the counter in the summer, will it stay pristine? Will I be able to eat it in two days? Probably not. Decomposition will take take place. You never see anything going from decomposed back into a composed state, but you will see things going from fresh, for instance, to decomposed. Another term that we talk about at this point when we talk about driving forces is the free energy of a system. And that depends on two things, the enthalpy, and remember delta H is a change in enthalpy. So the enthalpy is defined as the heat content of a system, and the delta H is the change in the heat content, so whether something's going um, in an endothermic or exothermic direction, and then entropy, and again, Entropy is the randomness of a system, and it is dependent on the temperature as well. So the Gibbs free energy is a combination of the enthalpy and the entropy of a system, remembering that entropy is also related to the temperature. Why would entropy re be related to temperature? So let's stop and remember. Temperature is a measure of the average kinetic energy of a system. And we've learned in previous chapters that as the temperature goes up, the kinetic energy of the particles increases. So as the kinetic energy of the particles increase, there's more motion. And again, you could see how more disorder would take place as the temperature goes up. So the equation for the Gibbs free energy is delta G which is the change in the free energy of a system, is equal to delta H, which is the change in the enthalpy of a system, minus T, Kelvin temperature, times delta S, the change in entropy of a system. If delta G is negative, the reaction will be favorable and can occur spontaneously. If delta G is a positive number, the reaction will be in general unfavorable and will not be spontaneous. Note, the delta G uh, naught is delta G of formation, delta H naught would be delta H of formation, delta S naught, delta S of formation at standard temperature. So whenever you see those little um, superscript zeros, they're referring to standard temperature. So entropy, enthalpy, and free energy. Here's a chart. So this is telling you about the value of the delta H, the delta S, and the delta G. So where delta H is um, negative, which means it's exothermic, 
and delta S is positive means randomness is increasing. Delta G will always result uh, in a negative number from that equation. And again, that means it can be spontaneous. If delta H is a negative value and it's exothermic and delta S is a negative value, meaning it's less randomness, so the delta S is decreased, then delta G will be negative at lower temperatures, so it could be spontaneous. If, in fact, delta H is a positive value and delta S is positive, then it could be spontaneous at higher temperatures. And if delta H is positive endothermic reaction, delta S is negative randomness decreased, it will never be negative, so it will never be spontaneous. So for what we've just been talking about here, it's helpful if you look at the equation, remembering that delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. So let's look at a sample problem. So here's a free energy calculation sample problem. For the reaction, ammonium chloride solid uh, decomposes to ammonia gas and uh, hydrogen chloride. At 298.15 Kelvin, the delta H for the reaction is 176 kilojoules per mole. That's um, endothermic. And delta S is 0.285 kilojoules per mole. Calculate delta G and tell whether the reaction is spontaneous in the forward direction at this temperature. So here is our equation, delta G equals delta H minus T delta S. Here's my delta H, here's my T in Kelvin, and here is my delta S. So doing the math, we end up with a delta G of 91.0 kilojoules per mole. It is a positive number, therefore this is a non-spontaneous reaction. Delta G is positive. So that is my sample problem for you. There are a few of these that we'll work through with worksheets. This is Ms. Augustine signing off.